Hello and welcome to Beyond the Scale. We're so happy that you're here with us today. Um, Stephanie and I would like to do a series of videos of um, things that are going on in the carnivore community, kind of current events, and we will talk about some different topics every time that we meet. We wanted to start today with um, following trends and um, kind of mistakes that we have made um, doing different things, uh, just kind of following, you know, what, what the thing of the hour is. Um, so, and also damaging advice that we've heard in the past and, and have had um, conversations with people about um, maybe following different things and getting some advice that really hasn't worked for them. So yeah, that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah. Um, and we're both guilty of this. So we're mm. not shaming anybody and, and we're not saying that um, certain trends or advice is completely wrong. It just may be wrong for you. Mm. Um, and I think we lose a lot of people that way. Um, the, the dogma that we see, um, the large groups doling out advice that is so generalized, um, and then seeing clients come and say, well, I know I'm not supposed to be eating dairy. Okay, why? Well, this group says that dairy isn't carnivore. I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, um, and it may not be right for that person, but that's such general advice. And yes, it is carnivore. It just a lot of factors play into what's right and what's wrong for each of us. Mm -hmm. I think we, you know, we don't know how the damage that people have, we don't know um, from one person to, we're also different. We say that all the time. We're also different. And, um, you know, thinking that one thing is going to work for everyone is just so misguided. And, and yeah. even thinking that one way of eating, like I don't think for in, in any stretch of the imagination that carnivore is for everybody. Um, maybe you can handle some veggies, maybe, you know, it, it's so individual and, and right. also, you know, maybe you don't have to do it for your whole entire life, you know, mm -hmm. maybe once you've healed and, um, you know, fruits and veggies and seasonal things and, well, maybe not fruits, but <laughs> um, can be appropriate for you once um, insulin resistance is a thing of the past, which I don't know if it ever is entirely, but, um, you know, once you've healed, uh, there are things that can be very beneficial and, and make maintaining a low carb meat-based lifestyle, lifestyle more desirable, I think. Right, right. Because people say, I can't stick to this. It's so restrictive. Um, and, and everybody's trying to say, oh, no, it's not restrictive. There's so much variety. Um, but then they're admonished every time they ask a question and they just give up completely. There's also the factor of food addiction. You know, you got to take that into account. Um, you know, when I first started carnivore, I saw a very young person who had healed a lot of damage and I'm like, and they were eating so much and coming from such a restricted background, a, a calorie restriction background. I thought, finally, um, that was not the answer for me. That was not the right choice. Um, and then I did a lot of fasting. I now know that was not the right choice. It works for a lot of people, but there are certain factors that make it not for everyone, especially in the very beginning. There are people who say, absolutely no sweeteners. That's a big no-no. Well, yeah, you should phase them out because they can do so much damage to your gut, 
But if you need it as a transition, by all means. Mm -hmm. But I think the most important thing is that you don't have to do it alone. Like working with somebody or finding the right group who isn't just telling everybody that they're wrong or laughing at them or like, that's so important. Um, Because like I said, there's just so many people being turned off Mm -hmm. of this way of eating when it could be so beneficial for them, but we're losing them. Yeah, I think right out the gate. Yeah, I think, you know, eating a specific way can be very alienating just on its own. You know, maybe your family isn't doing it with you. Maybe everybody thinks you're crazy. Maybe, you know, you get slack from people in your community, whatever. And then um, you get on Facebook and, and read posts where, you know, people are saying, people share something and and you're absolutely attacked. That isn't carnivore. That isn't, or if you're not doing it this way, don't consider yourself a carnivore. Right. Don't, you know, this is the only way I've been doing this for 18 years. Um, you know, I saw a post just the other day and, um, I just felt so bad for anybody else that might be reading it that, mm-hmm. um, you know, just so, so dogmatic. And I understand that people are so proud of what they've done and the way that they've done it, but that doesn't mean you say to someone else, you have to do it this way. You don't know where that person's at. You don't know anything, anything. And to make, you know, you've got a million followers and it's just such a disservice and you're right. It it is driving people away. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and, and so what are some of the things that have been issues for us? I mean, I would start with, um, butter probably, (laughs) (laughs) you know, that trying to eat all kinds of butter because, um, everybody was doing it and it couldn't have been worse for me in every way. My digestion, um, I didn't, I just didn't feel good. It was Mm -hmm. so obvious, so quick that, um, you know, and I think even if you see the signs that it's not working, we try, we try to push through it right? because, oh my God, everybody's doing this and look, the weight's just falling off them and they feel so good. And, um, Mm -hmm. but if it doesn't feel good to you, um, then it's not right for you. And, and that's one of my hugest mistakes is that I was just going to just push through it and make it work. (laughs) Six weeks of fire. Yeah. Down Mm -hmm. there. Yeah. Liquid. (laughs) (laughs) Tried all the things, but it made so much sense, right? Like high fat, moderate protein, if you're insulin resistant, sometimes if you're having too much protein, that gluconeogenesis is happening and you may need less protein because your body is not using it properly and you need more fat. Well, let me tell you that fat was just going straight through me. Mm-hmm. And then I wasn't getting enough protein on top of that. It was not a good time. No. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And it, but it made sense, right? But not considering the fact that I may have some uh, gut microbiome dysbiosis kind of issues happening, like didn't think about that, just kept trying to force myself to do it. And, you know, now I'm learning SIBO may be an issue. Or um, SIRS. Um, so, yeah, that might not have been a good idea. Well, it definitely wasn't a good idea, but, you know, noticing that I felt so much better when I backed off the fat and increased the protein again. Mm. Yeah. So, so if high fat isn't working for you, it's okay. You know, you just got to take another step back and try to get things balanced and maybe you can try again but Mm. yeah if you're 
trying to force yourself through six weeks of yeah. horrible <laughs> diarrhea well, you know, like I did. It made me feel like, you know, with a history of Crohn's disease and not having a gallbladder, um, it made me feel like, well, if I, if this won't work, I'm still not healed. Yeah. Which I think made me feel like a failure. I was like, I've been working on this for five years and I still can't tolerate eating some fat like that. That doesn't, you know, it, it, yeah, it made me feel like, well, clearly I've not, I've not accomplished what I think I have. And that's a terrible thing. You know, it it was very discouraging. It was like, oh my God, you know, there must be something still very wrong. And Mm -hmm. what what a terrible message for people to get that are, that are working so hard and have reversed so many things. And yeah, I, the other thing I would say, um, that there's a lot of disinformation about is electrolytes, um, salting, not salting, potassium, whatever. Um, and in that particular post that I saw the other day, um, the person was like, if you're truly carnivore, you don't need electrolytes. And I was like, <laughs> I, what? what? You can't tell a population of people that. I mean, right. you, you test these things. I mean, like, like Danny <laughs> says all the time, you mm-hmm. test, you don't guess. Well, right. you know what? Potassium in excess or too little can kill you. Um, right. So telling people, <laughs> you know, not knowing their particular bodies and them not knowing their own bodies and what the signs and symptoms of these sort of issues can be, um, I can't think of anything more dangerous. Yeah, yeah. And, and you do, it is a lot of self-experimentation, but if you can get with a group or a coach or a physician or, or a nutritionist who, you know, agrees with this and sees um, the value in it, then they can they can kind of help guide you and you don't have to suffer like we did. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I think it it can be a lot of suffering. Yeah. You know, like I said, if you you kind of have um a perfectionist uh outlook on things, um you just push and push and push and try to make it work, even yeah. if you are suffering. And I just think um yeah finding a group, finding a practitioner that um, is willing to look at things with you and work through them is really, really the key to all of it. Right, right. And knowing your your history too, and maybe you've suffered with a lot of symptoms that you never got a diagnosis for, Mm -hmm. Um, but working with somebody like that, um, us included, we help people all the time, um, through groups, through coaching, through, you know, just general free Facebook groups too, um, to kind of figure that out and and help get them started. And, you know, well, have you, we say to them, you know, have you considered this? Is this a possibility? Have you ever had symptoms of this? Um, so that even if they don't have a formal diagnosis, at least they have something, you know, like, oh, I never thought of that. Let me get tested for that. Let me go talk to my doctor about that. Um, so that they can start healing, you know, kind of give them a good starting point to do that. And and I just want to say, if you're in a group or on Facebook and someone's making you feel bad, (laughs) Let's stop right not there. The place for you. <laughs> it's not the place. It's not yeah. the place. Yeah. Um, if there's negativity in it, there's enough negativity in the world and enough negativity in medicine. You know, you're going to your doctor and and they're not kind and and um, you're not getting the help you need there. You don't need to get it <laughs> from some sort of dogmatic community that isn't going to meet you where you are and and um, with kindness and love and empathy. Right. Yeah. Right. That's, that's what we're all about. So if you're interested, we will have all the links, um, 
in the description below where you can find us, where you can message us, work with us, join our Facebook group, um, you know, work closely with us so that we can coach you and, and kind of dispel some of those myths maybe that you've heard. Um, and make sure to like, follow, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you soon. Thank <laughs> you.